How are we going everyone? Don't mind the noise in the background, we've got a bit of brush cutting going on in the paddocks out there, but today, while well, we've got an opportunity to, while the weather's holding off, it's not raining. Uh, now today's topic is uh, netting again. Now I spoke about the uh, steel rods, with the concrete rods that you can do with the uh, poly pipe over the top and arching. So that's one form of netting. We've also got the three-in-one uh, garden frame, flexi garden frame, which I'll demonstrate that one also in upcoming episodes. But today I'm going to show you a product called uh, build a frame now these are the ones that i've got here it's these little angles problem is i haven't got any stock of this folks so just bear with us in a couple of weeks we should have some stock of this coming in it's ideal for garden stakes 25 mil by 25 mil garden stakes nothing bigger than that if you need to sometimes you have to shave them down i've done it to one of them let me show you what i mean by shaving it down just cutting the ends off a bit because this is a little bit oversized. They're never perfect because they run, th they buzz through a, uh, a machine and they don't get them exactly all the time. So if it's a little bit large, you just do that to it and it's easy to put on. Now what I'm doing with this here, the builder frames, is I'm building uh, a covering, an in insect netting covering over the top of this lime tree, the Tahitian lime tree. Again, it's not the season to do it, but I'm doing it now so you can prepare yourself uh, to cover your trees once the flowers are finished. The most important thing you need to do is leave your trees open uh, so that the pollinators can come in and do their job so you can get your fruit setting on the plant properly. Otherwise, covering them up, you're going to reduce the likelihood of having fruit set on your trees and your vegetables as well. Now, what I'm going to cover it with today is a product called insect netting. Now, this is a uh, formed insect netting. This is 1200 by 1200. And what I mean by 1200, it's a square shape and it sits 1.8 high. I brought the tape measure out just to show you what I mean. So we've got a square form and I've just measured it before. And you can see, where, where's 1200? Just down there. Let me grab it properly. You can see it there. So if I sit it over the framework, it should be 1200. Now, I did measure it in, on all four sides. And I found out on the other side is a little bit oversized. It's about 1250. So that's okay. Um, a little bit of play there. But the length of it, the height of it is 1800, 1.8 meters high. So you need garden stakes, and your garden stakes can't be 1.8 meters high. Don't confuse this. So if you've got 1800 mesh or, or insect netting, you need a stake that's a lot longer than that. Well, at least 300 mil longer. And that's what I've got here. This is 2.1. Okay. It's not going to work, is it? <laughs> All right, we'll work it out. We've got a little platform there. All right, so we've got 2.1, so 300 mils goes into the ground, uh, 30 centimetres, and that'll be enough for this because it's not top heavy. It shouldn't be top heavy. It may be a bit of a wing catcher, so if you can get 2.4 longer stakes, even better, but you're going to need a ladder to climb up so you can hammer them into the ground. Now, to get the framework perfectly square, the best way to do it is with the actual frame itself. So I've cut the four shorts that I need and you position it around your tree and the purpose of that is so you can see the boundaries of your tree line like this in case you've got a branch hanging over the outside of it. So that's going to go there, that's going to go there, that sits here and like that. So pretty good with that. We've got a branch, it's growing out on this side a little bit, so I might slide it over. So you can see I've got a huge gap on this side. Whereas here, I'm just on the boundary. What do you reckon, George? Can you see that? Hey, one of our followers is uh, telling me he's been eyeing off my work there. And he reckons I was a little bit too close with my apple tree. So my, my apple tree. So what I'm gonna do is slide this over a little bit to there, bring this across. So we're going to be a little bit off center. That's because of the tree. Then again, we may restake it. No, I take that back. I'll restake this and get that nice and straight so it's not wobbly and we should be right. So we'll go back to where we were. So center it to the tree all the way around like that. We should be comfortable. It doesn't have to be 100%. You know, accuracy is important. But, you know, 20 mil out here or there, remember, we've got a bit of flex because the garden stakes are standing upright, so you can pull them in and pull them out as you need to. All right, so now it's time to hammer them in. You 
You know, it'd be easier if my camera operator was holding the stick so I can use two hands. 1900 here at the moment. We're just about 100 mil above where I want to be, but it's getting pretty hard underneath there because I'm so close to these conifers. So I dare say, I'm not going to get it down any further because it's bouncing at the moment and I might be hitting a root system. So we'll leave it at 1900 because it's netting and it's got a bit of flex. I'm going to peg it down at the bottom as well so it might stretch out that 100 mil we need. All right, so we've got the four uprights in. That one went a little bit lower than the other three. I might have to pull it out because it might be sitting on a bit of an angle when I put all these on now. We've got, it's three square hollow sections welded together. There's a couple of holes here so you can put some screws in to stop it from sliding in and out, I suppose. But uh, we're going to test it out without the screws for now. This is hardwood. It's going to be pretty difficult to drill straight into this without it splitting open. So I'm just going to put it on as it is and use the netting to hold it together. It's not going to slide off that easily. But keep in mind, one of them has got a hole right through it like that. See that there? Whereas the other two butt up to it. They're a shorter uh, piece. So if I put that on here, for example, it'll slide all the way down. So we don't want that to happen. So I'm going to use one of the other pieces to put it in position like that. Do, the, do that with all four sides. Jack, do you mind? Thank you, buddy. All right. We'll do that with all the four. That's butted up to the end. That's a bit stiff there. Yep, that's it there too. Okay. All right, now this is a problem. We've got a bit of an angle going on here. It might grab it because this one's a bit stiff. Yep, that's going to hold on beautifully. The builder frame angles are quite robust, folks. They can take a bit of weight on them too. So they'll tolerate you know, high winds quite easily. So that is sitting a little bit low. That's okay, it won't matter, it's only bird netting, we're not putting any decking on it or anything. And this has got a bit of a twist in it. Okay, I can see what I've done here. See what I've done here? Alright, so we are going to have to put a screw in somewhere. Because I've got it going in both sides. That's stiff on this side, but loose on that side. Anyway, I could screw that in afterwards. Now that's stiff now, good. All right, now we dress it up with the netting. Hey, Jack. Hey, buddy. Do you want to come this way? Come on, come along this way. Now, this is a formed insect netting, folks. As many of you will know already, we've got different sizes online. We've got 2.4 by 2.4 um, circular ones, like a cylinder shape. We've got rectangular ones as well. We've got ones with a little flap on them. This is probably the smallest one in shape out of the lot, and it's ideal and what I mean by ideal, for small trees, but even tomato plants. So you may have a raised planter, and a lot of people do have raised square planters, which are out of sleepers or even tin, square one metre by one metre. This could sit on the outside, or even if it's a larger one, one and a half by one and a half, you can put your garden stakes on the inside and have your veggies sitting in there. And you can have your lettuce and basil underneath there as well, and have your tomato plants, one, two or three, growing under this. And especially for those who suffer from uh, fruit fly. You know, we've got problems with fruit fly all over the place. Now, Victoria, it's been here for a few years and we need to take a stronghold and protect our plants and stop them from populating because they're going to cause nothing but trouble, problems for us, and all our produce is going to go to waste. The only thing you've got to be careful here is a snag. And it's not the sausage type, folks. It's the burrs on the timber I can get caught up on the netting. So be careful, don't pull it hard. If you feel it catching onto something, because this is old timber that I've got, just be careful with it, take your time, get it on top, carefully like I'm doing here. And I'm not the tallest fellas in the world, so it's gonna take me a bit of an effort to get this right. And that's why folks, the poly pipe that I showed you on the apple tree, the three in one flexi garden frame that we have, and even the six way cane connectors, are a, great, a better option, I suppose. Not as robust, but a better option when it comes to dressing and pulling your netting over the top. It doesn't snag on this timber like it is here. So this is the second type of uh, garden frame. Well, actually the third. We did the uh, poly pipe, the first one. We'll leave a link to the, in the description so you can go and see that one. We did the six-way cane connector as well. And we'll have a link for that if you like. And obviously this one now. The next one I'm going to do, folks, is going to be the 3-in-1 Flexi Garden Frame, which is online now. 
I did say that I've got these higher than usual, 1900. This is 1800 long and you know, we might be able to take it down. Let me give it a go. Now this is insect netting folks, so there's not as much flex in this as there is in your typical bird netting. These are our tent pegs or garden pegs as we call them. The netting hooks onto it at the bottom like that, pegs it down quite easily. But looking up here, this is what's happened. No, there's no flex in the insect netting at all. Literally, see I'm 100 above ground. So what I've got to do is take it all off and cut it down. So when it says 1800, it's 1800. You can't cheat on that one there. So it's not bird netting where you can stretch it because it's pulled it over on this side. Come over here, have a look at this. See that? It's pulled it over, so that's the seam there. That should be sitting back here. We're 100 mil above ground, higher than we need to. These are 1900. All right, I'll be back in a second. I'll just cut down these two sides here, folks, but not these two, I hammered them in because they're further away from the conifers, so the ground's softer here. The other thing you gotta factor in if your ground is un un unlevel, you know, if it's undulating, that's what's happening here. This side's a little bit lower because I measure from the ground up, and that side, if you wanna be really pedantic, you can put a, a spirit level and find your highest point and work back from that down. So your lowest point, obviously, uh, actually you gotta work from your lowest point, from the ground that is, then your highest point will be shorter because the ground's higher, then you'll have a little bit of extra netting. So always work from your lowest ground level. I didn't do that, I've just gone from the ground, whatever the ground heights are. So that side's higher, and if I was to put a, a level on it, it's kicking up a little bit, but I'm, look, I'm not fussed about that. As long as it still reaches the bottom, this is what I'm hoping it does now. And again, I'm being cautious because I don't want it to snag onto any splinters here and cause it to grab. That is better. So I cut a hundred off that. I'm going go crazy here, I think. <laughs> Might have to cut 200 off it. And what you've also got to factor in when you're building these things with the builder frame is to allow for the, the thickness of the square hollow section. So if it's 1800 peg uh, netting, you are got to take away the square hollow section thickness. In this case, it's 25 mil, 30 mil. And at the end of the day, even 1800, I've, ta I've taken it to its maximum length. Do it 1750, one meter 750, it gives you a little bit of play. So this is quite tight, because I've measured it to be exactly to the length of the netting, which will work, but I don't like tensioning it that much. So 1800 netting high, do 17 high, 1750 high framework. So you've got a little bit of 50 mil to play with so you can tie it down and, and peg it down properly. And then you'll protect your garden. And it's all about protecting your trees and vegetables from pests, not from pre um, uh, predators or from pollinators. You need those, so allow the flowers to finish and then cover your trees like I'm covering mine. I'm gonna take it off now, because after we've done this little demo, I've gotta let the tree finish its flowering. And then I'm gonna cover it as well, so I don't have any citrus gall wasp, I don't get any fruit fly, or any other pests that can damage my fruit and vegetables. Also check out our website, facilitiesgarden.com, and remember our black grit special, by the end of the month, it's gonna go up in price. Those prices are unsustainable, so we're gonna go back up a little bit. I don't know how much yet. The online team will obviously notify us. But for now, take advantage of the huge discounts, up to 70% off black grid, um, like four kilos, two twin pack that is, so you get two four kilos for 20 bucks, uh, normally 79.90. There are great specials on our website, vasilisgarden.com, no .au, just vasilisgarden.com, and the spring special code, which is spring, for an extra 25% off this weekend only, and tune into 3 aw Radio, Gardening Talk with me and Darren James. Give us a call with your gardening questions and gardening ideas. Love to hear from you. From me, Vasily, Maresi.